In the studio today, we have country music artist Robert Henry from Robert Henry and the Repeaters. How's it going, Robert? How's it going, Hondo? Thanks for having me in, man. My pleasure. Thanks for being here. Please tell us about you, who you are, and what you do. Uh, I'm Robert Henry. I front Robert Henry and the Repeaters, and uh, we play country music because it's all we're good at. Nothing else. A lot of bands around like to uh, throw in some covers that are more mainstream or rock and roll or pop, and we just we just play honky tonk music. So yeah, that's what we like. Honky tonk music yep. sounds great. Speaking of your music, you and the Repeaters have an upcoming show in September here at Washougal Times Restaurant and Lounge. That's a Saturday, September twenty fourth at eight p.m. at Washougal Times. Please tell us about that, life before that, and life after that. Oh, man. Uh, well, we're definitely excited to be in Washougal. Um, you were telling me that it's a burgeoning music scene here at the at the Times. And uh, so we're we're happy to play. We love playing places like this, where it's a local crowd, and you can get people going. I'm like, I can take a bar crowd and get them right in my hand. It's, it's really fun. But life before that... I don't know how far you want me to go back, but uh, we're going to be on tour this summer, coming up uh, here shortly in August, and um, we're going out to uh, Jackson, Wyoming, Casper, Wyoming. We're playing uh, in Spearfish, South Dakota during the Sturgis Rally. Uh, it's always a good time with the bikers, and then we're hitting uh, Laramie on the way back, uh, possibly a show in Utah, and then back for uh, Pendleton Roundup, and then after that, we'll, I think maybe the following week, we're at the Washougal Times. So we'll be very tight by the time we're here. Fantastic. Yeah. Super excited. Like you referenced, we've been getting to know each other before we technically started this interview. But it's great to be in the booth, let the Outlaw listeners uh, know more about you and your band. How about sharing some of your musical influences and favorite artists? Uh, as far as country goes, definitely my favorite is Merle Haggard. And obviously Waylon, uh, all the Hanks. You know, guys like, I even go back as far, I like, I like the Western Swing stuff. I like Bob Wills. I like Jimmy Rogers, the old blue stuff, and Doc Watson and Merle Travis and all that. All the, any, anything country in that realm I'll, I'll listen to. Uh, all the singer-songwriter guys from Texas, Guy Clark, uh, Towns Van Zant, um, definitely influenced by those guys. So, pretty wide realm, but uh, folk, country, blues, all that stuff. Yeah. And to me, that sounds like real country music. I say that because uh, on your social media, I learned that Robert Henry and the Repeaters perform real country music. I feel like the outlaw country listeners identify with and enjoy real country music. And if you would, love to get your interpretation of that. Yeah, um, like like I was saying earlier, music is subjective and it means different things to different people. But uh, I think country music fans know country music when they hear it and they know when it's not country music. And uh, I think it's really cool that we have stations like, like Outlaw popping up that are uh, sticking to a more traditional sound uh, because the stuff that's coming out of Nashville, I mean, we've all known it for years. It's just, it's not the same. It's, uh, in fact, it, I think it should be in its, in its own genre. You know, I'm not going to put shade on anybody for having a different song in their heart than I do because everybody interprets and feels different things. But uh, I know country music when I hear it and... 99% of the stuff on mainstream country FM radio it is not what I would call country music or any type of roots music at all. So, appreciate your insight. Respect that. Happen to agree with it. And I think a lot of our listeners do as well. Some of these questions came from Outlaw listeners. One we touched on earlier. I'm just going to repeat it now. Not that you have to come up with an answer. Was hey, uh, I'm a repeater. So. <laughs> who your favorite Waylon Jennings song is. So how about we move to the next question, but please be thinking of that um, respect and love that you like Merle Haggard and a lot of our listeners do. Um, do you have any particular life philosophies that you'd like to share? Uh, well, nobody should really take advice from me. I just kind of do what I want. I would say don't, uh, don't waste your time doing stuff you don't want to do. Like if you have a dream or a, or a or a passion, you should follow it, or at least follow it long enough to find out whether it's for you or not. Uh, because I went straight out of high school; I didn't go to college. I went into the trades, uh, you know, working. I've had probably every type of construction job you can think of, and I I waited a long time to just jump into the music. Um, 
because oh I don't have enough money saved up or oh uh, I don't have a band or but you know what you gotta at some point quit making excuses and just jump in the pool so jump in the pool love it yeah how about we use that to tie into how and when you started making music when you started singing playing instruments but how about we lead into that with where you're from where you're at now and when and how you got into making music uh well i was born in central florida and my parents growing up down south they were you know in florida in particular i mean you had all those bands that came out of there in the late 70s well all throughout the 70s um that you know the allman brothers were from daytona you got molly hatchet and uh leonard skinner from jacksonville uh, the Outlaws are from Tampa, so they were really into the Southern rock, and then from that, my dad got really into country, just because there was so much crossover with guys like, you know, Toy Caldwell playing with uh, Waylon and, and Hank in their early years. Um, so I, 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 I always grew up with country and Southern rock and stuff. One thing, I, I didn't even share with this with you yet, I went to uh, Catholic school growing up. It was very rule-oriented, and I have always just been kind of somebody who likes to buck the system for the sake of it. Um, and so I went through a rebellious phase and, you know, once I got out of, it goes through eighth grade. And once I went to high school, I grew my hair out and joined a heavy metal band and had a patch jacket and the high talk re box and did the whole Metallica thrasher thing. Um, and, uh, started a band and actually the drummer that's, uh, in the repeaters now, Jacob Morrow, he was the drummer for our heavy metal band back in high school. Uh, so we did that for a while, and then uh, my voice kind of just dropped to the basement at one point, and I figured out that uh, all that stuff that my parents raised me on, I could really, I could do a pretty good job singing. So we kind of trans transitioned over to that, and uh, I probably started writing and doing my own music and getting more into the country and the songwriting side um, around 19 or 20 years old. So... Um, and we've been, I've had a few different bands throughout the years, but, uh, we've just been kind of, you know, getting by where we can and, and making it happen ever since. So, and it's been a pleasure to get to know your music. How about touching on your current album, existing songs, some of the names we need to, we need to know and look out for, and then talk about what's next. Uh, so the stuff we have out right now, I have, I'm on Spotify, uh, Apple music, iTunes, wherever you want to listen, uh, YouTube, just look up Robert Henry, uh, it comes right up, and I put out an EP, gosh, it was like summer of COVID, summer 2020, uh, it's called In the Works, uh, the reason behind that was because uh, we couldn't get the whole album out, because I was kind of doing stuff in Nashville and doing stuff here, and we just kind of had to get something out, because everything was shut down, hence the name in the works uh, and that was a six song ep i think one more song and it would have been technically an lp but uh i'm not an expert on that but that had uh a song usually goes which is our most streamed song uh storm the gates probably our second most streamed song uh actually got a lot of uh airplay on some uh b stations uh in the midwest um so that did pretty well for us other than that, uh, I put out a single a couple years ago with uh, Georgette Jones, uh, George Jones and Tammy Wynette's daughter, and we just covered one of uh, George and Tammy's songs. That was a very cool experience. Got to hear a lot of really cool stories, work with some uh, great players in Nashville, so that was neat. And then we're actually, I was in the studio yesterday. We tracked three more songs. We were in the studio a couple weeks, and one more, a couple weeks ago, and we're just getting another full album out. So um, look for that probably by the end of the year. Uh, we're going to redo a couple of the songs that I wasn't quite satisfied with uh, from the EP. Um, so if you see some new versions of some songs that are already on the Spotify account, uh, don't be surprised. In my opinion, I think they'll probably sound better just because we've been playing so much live that uh, we just wanted to reinterpret those uh, the way we've been doing them because songs tend to evolve and change as you, as you play them. Like if you listen to some, uh, for instance, my favorite, Merle Haggard, you listen to uh, the stuff that he originally put out in the 60s, and then you listen to the same live version of a song that he's doing sometime in the mid-80s. It's a, almost a completely different song. Because he yeah. was working with horn sections at that point and doing some really different stuff. So, yeah, The evolution. Love yeah. that. Thinking songwriting. Now I'm thinking Merle since you mentioned Merle. But how about songwriting? Um, you talked about studio life, 
songs coming out. How about some insight on how you write songs and or any uh, advice you'd give to someone who's aspiring to be a songwriter? Uh, how I write songs is, I, I mean, I don't really have any set rules uh, like we were we were talking about out there. Um, you know, sometimes one of the guys comes to rehearsal and they've got a lick on the guitar or the steel or something or just an idea in their head and, and you know, we work that and I'll write lyrics to it later. Uh, but nine times out of ten, it's, you know, you'll hear something in conversation or, you know, I'll, I'll be on a job site somewhere. I still work construction during the day. And, you know, one of the guys will say something or like a joke or a saying and it'll stick in your head or you'll be talking to some old timer at the bar and, and he'll just say something cool that you haven't heard before. And you, I'll usually build a song around that. Um, and usually it ties in with just kind of like a the thematic layer that I'm trying to, to get across and I'll like take that hook and kind of wrap it around that, if that makes any sense. I think it does, especially coming from the listeners who are appreciative of songwriting, studio life, making music, playing instruments. How about we talk about your band or how about you share some insights about your band, band members, band life, the repeaters. What a great name. In my opinion, I'm sure a lot of folks acknowledge that uh, Robert Henry and the repeaters sounds like a great band out of the gate. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a big, uh, big gun guy, big uh, vintage gun guy. Uh, I own a Henry rifle. I've got all kinds of stuff that I'm working on, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, but Robert Henry, you know, the old Henry repeater, load on Sunday and shoot all week. So, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a big history guy too. So I just thought that was a cool tie in with, uh, my interests and the other guy's interests and, you know, into my name. But, uh, we've got, uh, like I said, my, my pal Jake that I've known since high school, been playing music for a long time. Uh, he's on the drums. He handles a lot of stuff with, uh, you know, all the clerical stuff that I'm not quite the best at, um, you know, calling and advancing the dates on the road, making sure we, we've got, uh, you know, keeping inventory of the merch and making sure we're actually making a profit on stuff. Uh, he handles a lot of that. Uh, and then, uh, on the bass, uh, we got, uh, we call him bulk. He's, he's a big dude, big bass man. Uh, Matt Haugen. He is probably one of the best bass players that I have ever played with. Uh, and he locks in with Jake really well. Uh, great guy to have on the road. Good sense of humor. Always brings the libations. I won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, on guitar, uh, Gunnar Richardson. Um, he he toured in Europe with a with a power metal band for a lot of years. Uh, really good picker. Uh, actually, kind of had to pare down his playing and like relearn how to fit into a band dynamic because country is so different and so much more sparse. And there's so much more space in the music than playing uh, rock or metal, where every space is filled. Um, but he he pared it down and man, he's like totally a country player now. Yeah, I'm really proud of how how far he's come and how we've uh, come together with the band dynamic. And then we got uh, old Bob Littleton. It's funny, we're all in our 20s on the road, and then he goes on the road with us. He's 72 years old. He puts up with a lot of crap. But uh, his him being a steel player, he's only really ever played country music. So uh, his knowledge of you know just the theory and how it's supposed to sound, and like he has a really good understanding of what's in my head. Uh, because he's been in the band since I started this project, so it's it's almost like that musician's telepathy. Uh, if someone's overplaying, he'll speak right up in uh, rehearsal and say, "Hey, uh, why don't you do this here?" And uh, you know, all that stuff and chord changes and and just doing different stuff to differentiate, so we're not playing the same song over and over again. Uh, the uh, sage knowledge from somebody that has so much more experience is is awesome. So. Sounds great. If agreeable, I'm going to mention a quick fact, and then how about we do three or four more questions, wrap up the interview session here, transition to you playing live on your guitar. Cool. Uh, so want to make sure it's clear that uh, our listeners know that you, Robert Henry, and the repeaters will be playing at Washougal Times Saturday, September 24th at 8 p.m. Everyone's looking forward to that. These questions come from Outlaw listeners specifically, and I think you'll, uh, you'll appreciate them, and, and we appreciate them submitting questions. Um, you touched on arms, firearms. 
what are some of your passions, um, leisure pursuits, things outside of music, such as arms? Uh, yeah, the, I, I, I like uh, the antique guns. I've got a couple replica black powder uh, pistols that are fun. Uh, I'm refurbishing an old uh, Chinese SKS right now, stripping down the wood and making it uh, real nice and you know, clean it out. I, that Cosmoly and stuff, man. Other than that, uh, a lot of my hobbies outside of music, since I'm doing this pretty much full-time now, I don't get to do, but I'm a, I was a huge fisherman for a lot of years. I used to go fishing almost every day. I lived in Yellowstone for a while, too, um, and my only job really was to sing songs, so I had all day to just kind of go out and be on the river and, and just do whatever. Other than that, I like to watch football. You bet. So, yeah, yeah. But music is pretty all-consuming at this point. <laughs> Okay, compound question. Do you refer to the evening meal as supper or dinner? And what are your general thoughts on food, barbecuing, kitchen life, restaurants, favorite foods, food prep, seasoning, spices, etc.? Oh, I've heard my dad call it supper a number of times, but uh, I was born down south, but I was not raised there. So I didn't, I don't have any of those. I call it dinner. And what was the second part? Any thoughts on food, barbecuing, oh, food. eating food, restaurant food? Oh, that's uh, another kitchen, hobby kitchen I didn't even food. touch on. No, I've, I've, I've got a smoker, and uh, no, I, I cook almost every night. Yeah, and, and you'll find me out on my property in Aurora, and there's usually a billow of smoke, uh, not just from my cigarette, but uh, from the smoker. No, we're, we're, uh, we're always doing ribs or chicken or uh, brisket or, um, you know, I'll do pork butt and do sandwiches. It's, it's I, I like barbecue. Love it. Uh, yeah. Aurora, Oregon, smoking, eating, playing, I assume. Yep. Music. Yep. Good times. Picking guitars. Yeah. Having bonfires when there's not a burn band like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get back to that Waylon Jennings question in a second, but one of our last questions before you play is, uh, do you feel like you're more famous than DJ Hondo? Um... I don't feel like I'm famous at all. In fact, we played the Wild Hair Country Fest down in Canby a couple weeks ago, and we were backstage with all these guys that you know I've looked up to for years, um, and guys that I listen to on Spotify and gals. And I was like, it was a little bit of like we all kind of had to step back and like, do we even belong here? You know, there's like Vincent Neil Emerson's over here, Jamie Wyatt's over here, freaking Zach Bryan. Who I'm pretty sure has a song on on mainstream radio now. He's over here. I'm like, what what am I doing here? So it's, I, I don't. You're you're more famous than I am. <laughs> That's thoughtful. That's real thoughtful. And and I appreciate your uh, humbleness. And I can see you're a credible human being. You're humble. You're talented. Looking forward to hearing you play live. Certainly looking forward to Saturday, September 24th, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. You and the repeaters will be playing here. Washougal Times, Restaurant and Lounge. Anything you want to touch on before I ask one more question and close this interview out? Uh, just make sure you make it down here on the 24th. And, uh, you know, if you go check out our music on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you listen, uh, it's also on our, if you guys don't have any of the streaming services, if you go to roberthenrymusic.com, we've got our EP posted right on the homepage. So you can listen to it right there. Uh, for free but you know we've got those songs on there but when you come see us we've got a plethora of other uh, originals um, and which is why we've been in the studio so much but if you don't hear something um, especially you know maybe that I'm going to play later uh, you will hear it live uh, with the band yeah. terrific I'm going to repeat that I'm, uh, your website roberthenrymusic.com yep that's where I went to see all kinds of information, including tour stops, including dates in Wyoming, South Dakota, uh, local country stores, Aurora, Oregon, Washington. So RobertHenryMusic.com has all kinds of resources to yep. uh, to pick up on you or get to know you better. Yep, yep. And I just updated it, so it's it's all up to date. We've got all the dates that we've booked on there. So okay, yep. okay. One more question: What is your favorite Waylon Jennings song? Oh, I've listened to so much Waylon Jennings over so many years 
that it's hard to pick one. I always thought I'll just I'll just I'll just pick one. Uh I always thought that uh the song Bob Wills is still the king was was a cool song. Uh especially when they go into the uh the faded love breakdown at the end. Um that's that's pretty pretty neat homage. Uh because you know a guy like Waylon if you know it's it's hard to take yourself out of the time and place that you're in but uh I mean he would have looked up to a guy like Bob Wills the same way I look up to him. So it's cool for him to to see to to hear him put that and name drop him in a song the same mm-hmm. way I would name drop a you know Waylon in a song or Merle or somebody. So mm-hmm. yeah. We should all look for that tack on at the end of the Waylon song Bob Wills is still the king. Yep. It's there. Yep. Either you know it or you don't, but now with this interview, I think more people are going to discover it and appreciate it. Yes, sir. Robert, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here in the Outlaw Studio at Washougal Times. I've really enjoyed this interview. Next phase is you picking up the guitar, playing and singing, and I'm grateful that you're here. Look forward to doing this again, perhaps. Uh, Aurora is not that far away, if agreeable. would love to have you back. I would love to. Yeah, I would love to do this. This is awesome. All right, Outlaw World. That's Robert Henry from Robert Henry and the Repeaters. Great interview. Hope you enjoyed it. Over and out.